everybody and welcome to the i3net interview series. I'm Bianca, the CEO of i3net, and I'm really excited about the conversation that I'm going that I'm about to have and I'm going to share with you today. So as everyone knows, we are in a really crazy and unusual time right now being in another lockdown due to COVID. There's a lot of pressure on people at the moment. And so resilience and strength is a topic that keeps coming up and up. And because of that, I thought it would be a really great opportunity to have a conversation with Craig of Leadership Creativity on this topic. Um, so Craig, welcome. Would you like to start by introducing yourself and the work that you do? Sure, thanks Bianca. I'm Craig Morris from Leadership Creativity. We're a local Illawarra business. Um, and our aim is to develop leadership for you know, business owners and, and leaders within businesses so that we can you know, create great leaders, uh, develop high-performing teams and create positive cultures across businesses. Great. That's an, an excellent overview. Um, thank you, Craig. So I've got a number of questions that I wanted to ask you. So I'm going to dive right in and, and start asking those if that's okay. Yeah, so, sure. Understanding that you've been working with business owners and leaders, um, how are people coping with the challenge of the lockdowns? Yeah, well, it's really interesting because you know, in talking to a lot of our clients and, and also people that we just talk to generally, this, the key themes seem to be there. Um, everyone's ability to remain motivated and, and stay productive and focused, uh, maintaining their energy around you know the level of uncertainty that we're living in at the moment is becoming very exhausting. You know, some people are seeing you know, really high levels of frustration and anxiety and even conflict within their teams and themselves. Mm. Um, the, this level of uncertainty that we're experiencing at the moment is you know, like nothing that any of us have ever seen before. And the impact of experiencing a lot of these negative emotions or these challenging emotions more often, um, there's a risk that we spiral deeper into that level of negativity and become you know, more withdrawn and less engaged, less productive and even depressed. Um, we're experiencing you know, levels of stress and frustration and for extended periods. And, and when we experience those sort of emotions for prolonged and repeated, you know, repeated times, um, it's really important to manage our stress levels because when we experience them for a long period of time, they can have a real impact on our physical health as well as our you know, emotional and um, mental health. Mm. So it's really important to manage our mindset and our energy levels. Um, it's one of those things too that often, you know, it's it's a real challenge for people to admit that they're struggling or that they need some support or that things aren't okay. Mm. Um, fortunately, there's more and more publicity coming out around it's okay to be to not be okay, and we need to talk about it. And the way I look at it, um, the mental health movement mentioned it when I was you know, listening to one of their podcasts a while ago. And mental health is like physical health. When we look at our physical health, we eat, try to eat well, we do a bit of exercise to look up at our physical health. Mental health is the same. Mental and emotional health is the same. We need to do things on a regular basis that help us maintain our mental health position and our emotional health. We need to pro be proactive in doing that. Mm. I think that's, that's a really good point. I think um, I liked a few things that you said there. So particularly at the moment, how people are feeling and it's normal, okay, isn't it? You know, mm. we're going through a challenging time. And so these feelings that people are having are normal feelings to have. So I think recognising that is important. Um, but you're right, often people don't think about in terms of their own mental health actually needing to um, proactively do things um, to support that. But you're right, but with your health, you think, yes, I've got to eat healthy, I've got to exercise. So that that is um, a really, really good point. And actually leads me on to my second question, which is with the pressure on business owners and leaders, how important is it for those leaders to really look after themselves at this time? Yeah, it's an interesting one. It's really critical because, you know, the role of leaders is to look after the people around and help them learn and grow and, and support them through whatever they're doing. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. But if the, the business owners and the leaders aren't looking after themselves first, then how can they possibly be in a position to look after the people around them? And the challenge is that often as business owners and, and you know, senior leaders, we put everything and everyone else first. It's our responsibility to make sure that, you know, we work hard, that we're getting all things done. Everything falls on, on the, onto our shoulders. We're carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders. And, you know, it's up to us to pedal faster to make sure that we keep the, the things turning over. That And it can become overwhelming. And, you know, often, you know, I've done it myself in the past that um, we work ourselves to a point of exhaustion. 
and that's not healthy. So again, leadership is about helping people around us and supporting them so that they can learn and grow. But it's critical that we, that as business leaders and, and business owners, that we look after ourselves first. And it's not selfish. It's common sense. It, it's it's good practice to look after ourselves so that we can be at our best to look after the people around us. And whether that's your team at work or your, your family or your friends or whatever it is, it, it's so important to look after ourselves. So it's, it's important to you know, take the time, acknowledge in ourselves how we're feeling and recognize whether we are coping, what we're not coping with, what we can do to relieve the pressure and the stress, you know, mm -hmm. to you know, reset, clear the mind, ground ourselves, and then, you know, fill up our energy glass again. We need to re-energize so that we can actually keep going. Mm. Um, the prioritizing self-care is really important. It's not a case of just thinking about it and thinking, yeah, I should do that. And I hear that so many times. Yeah, I, I know I should do that. I was talking to a, a, a business owner yesterday and he said exactly the same thing. I said, you need to look after yourself first. Oh, yeah, I, I know I should. But it's like, no, no buts. It's about prioritizing and making sure you're doing things. Mm. So it's build it into a, you know, create a new routine, put it in your schedule. If you have people who use schedules, schedule the time and don't let it drop because mm. we need to relieve that pressure. We need to you know, quiet the mind because there's so much going on so that we can actually help other people, you know, be the best we can be so we can help others. Yeah, definitely. I love that idea to schedule that time in because with everybody being so busy um, and things just coming up and um, yeah, if, if you don't have it actually scheduled into your calendar, you can just easily, oh, I've just got to get this done without doing mm. that first. So yeah. And I think it's, um, you know, a really good analogy of it is you need to fit your own oxygen mask first before you, fit, you know, do it to others. And I think as you were talking, then I was like, you know, this is exactly what that is like, right? No, well, that, that's a really great analogy that, you know, you get on a plane when they go through the, the safety talk, it's always mm. when the oxygen mask drop, fit your own first, because if you don't look after yourself, you can't look after the people around mm. you. So it's, you know, it's so appropriate. And there's a group that we work with that actually use that as, as one of their analogies. And it, it's right. really important to, to realize that we need to look after ourselves first. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, thank you, Craig. And then the other question that I wanted to ask you, this, this one is, um, it really applies to me personally as well, you know, with so much information coming um, at us from various different sources, how do we prevent, and it's often negative information, how do we prevent that from dragging us down? Yeah, great question. Um, I've certainly had some experiences with this myself where it started to get at me and, you know, Anna, you know, and most of the I3 members will know, um, Anna, my wife, work, also works with me. Um, she pointed me in the right direction a couple of times because I've allowed myself to get sucked into the negativity. Mm. We've got to be really careful what we expose ourselves to. You know, if you look at the media and the way they're reporting the pandemic at the moment, you know, the, the language they use, borders, as a couple of examples, borders aren't closed, they're slammed shut. You know, mm. we don't move into lockdown, we're plunged into lockdown. It's very yeah. dramatic, extreme sort of language that they use. Um, and then you look at, you know, all the other things around conspiracy theories, the negative, the negative people, there's the, you know, on social media and on the news now, they're trying to blame various members of government or the medical advisors, or they're trying to blame people for everything. Mm. And it, it's, it's all aimed at um, creating division. Whereas humans, we're all about connection. Mm. So rather than trying to create the villains and someone to blame and dragging all that negativity up, we need to be really careful about what we focus on. Because if we spend too much time looking and reading and listening to that, it can actually drag us into that downward spiral of negativity. So one of the keys is to consciously limit the amount of time we spend listening to the news on social media and, and just even reading any of that negative stuff. So mm. some of the things I do, um, there's a number of, people and pages and things that in say my Facebook feed that I've either unfriended or, and or unfollowed. Mm. Um, on the other side of that, I've gone to a bunch of things that give me joy. So I follow um, a bunch of things on nature. I'm a keen mountain biker. So I follow stuff on mountain biking and scuba diving and you know, great um, places around the world. So I have a really positive feed coming up. And as I see negative things or someone or something putting out negativity on a regular basis, I clear it out, I unfollow it. 
Um, so that's one of the things we can do. Even with news, um, Anna and I tend to just get the headlines and then we get rid of the news mm. because you watch the news now and there's 20 minutes of boom and gloom about the pandemic. What we want to know is, you know, what are the case numbers now? Well, that's not great. They're increasing in, in Sydney at the moment. And what are the restrictions that we need to be aware of? Other than that, I don't want to know because it's just mm. too much negativity. Um, so it's, I guess to sum it up, it's really important to, to manage what we focus on. Um, the reality is we will always find what we focus on. So we want to make sure we're focusing on the right things, on positive things, on things that are going to help us stay above and, and stay positive and, and you know, forward focused. And that's not to say that we ignore all the negativity. It's there. Mm -hmm. We're going to experience negative emotions. We're humans. That's going to happen. But it's not dwelling on them. It's looking for solutions, you know, staying focused on the outcomes. When we talk about business, we've got some challenges. You know, clients might disappear. It might be very difficult to continue to operate. Okay, that's, that's not good. But what can we do that we weren't able to do before? For some businesses, it, it's... There's always things that we never get time to do. So mm -hmm. maybe it's, now's the time to get those things done, you know, the planning mm -hmm. or pre preparation or clearing up processes or whatever it might be. Um, it's really important to focus on those things. And for leaders, it's really important to remember, particularly for leaders, the energy and the mood that we carry with, within ourselves and into every interaction with other people has an impact on the people around us. Mm. So if we're feeling that negativity, if we're feeling stressed, if we're you know, really down and really feeling the weight of the world and we walk around like that, then everyone around us feels it. So it's really important, again, go back to where we started, focus on yourself first, look after yourself first, so that then you can, you can convey it and spread that more positive energy that's going to help people. Mm -hmm. And again, it's not a, only helps us, but that helps everyone around us. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, it was really, um, really useful. I like that about the Facebook feed um, because it's your feed and you're mm. in control of it. And so by adding in positive things, um, taking out negative things, then you're creating what you actually want to see. So I think that's a key a point. Um, yeah, people might have kind of forgotten that they actually control their feed and can control what they see to a degree. So I think that's a, a really good practical tip that people can do. Um, and I like that about using your time. You know, if you, if you do have time at the moment, then look at that list that you, you know, that you might have in your notepad of things you've always wanted to do and get those things done. So yeah, I, I really liked that. Um, and Craig, switching slightly from looking at ourselves, what can we do to support each other during these times? Yeah, that's really important. As I mentioned, you know, as human beings, um, one of the key things is connection and it's connecting with other human beings. Now, obviously in lockdown, it makes it a lot harder because it's very difficult to physically connect. Mm. Um, so first of all, um, the key thing is to be kind to ourselves and each other. You know, being kind to ourselves and giving ourselves a break, realizing that we're going to, we're going to struggle at times. We're going to experience some of those negative emotions and you know, we, may, we may find it difficult at times, but that, that's okay. Um, then it's you know changing our focus to okay what can we do so it's being kind to ourselves and also with other people you know with others it, it's about you know showing empathy and compassion being patient towards people particularly you know understanding that when things like this happen everyone deals with change in their own way at their own pace mm -hmm. you know, with the lockdown some people are just going to go on as though nothing ever changed and they'll just be fine others will be really struggling with it and it's they may be in exactly the same situation but they may really struggle and it's not right or wrong it's just how people deal with stuff mm -hmm. so the really important point is to be understanding and patient with people and just offer support you know make sure that they know you're there to support them you know they know you're there to help mm -hmm. um, check in you know, for you know business leaders and owners in relation to their teams make sure you're checking in regularly one of the things that we've started doing, we with the, when the pandemic started, we run some a workshop on leading remote and hybrid teams. Um, there's when the pandemic started, the lockdown started. A lot of businesses were the, for the first time had people working from home, and that requires some different some different leadership behaviours and skills. Mm. So we ran a, we're running been running workshops on that to help leaders through that. But it's really important that leaders check in with their people and connect with them. 
more regularly because you don't have those corridor conversations, you know, the, the lunchroom conversations, etc. Mm -hmm. So check in with them every day. Make sure you check in, understand how they're feeling, how they're really feeling. You know, ask them really um, curious questions. Be, be caring towards each other. And, and as I said, when they're working remotely, it's so important to do that regularly, every day. Just check in. It only takes a few minutes, mm. but look for anything that's not normal in those people. You know, not, it's sort of an uncharacteristic behavior. And that's mm. usually a sign that something may not be right. And just check in and make sure mm. they know that you're there to support them, that we're all going through this. We're all struggling at times. And, you know, that's the old thing of, you know, being somewhat vulnerable ourselves to acknowledge that, you know, in these uncertain times, we're all going to struggle at different points. So, you know, recognize that. And, and of course, as always, recognize the effort that they're putting in. When they do something, you know, appreciate it. Show some appreciation. Mm. Um, it's all part of maintaining that sense of belonging and, and that sense of being a, a part of the team. Because when you're not physically with people, it, that can sort of start to break down. So it's really important to make sure that everyone still feels like they're in the team. Mm. Um, and for, for leaders, it's about also about role modeling the behaviors that they want to see across the business and across their teams. Um, if you want people to be open and honest, then be open and honest and caring and all those sorts of things. So you know, be an ideal role model of how you want the culture across your business to be. And of course, you know, doing things like organizing virtual drinks. We've done that recently with some friends. We've got a couple of virtual um, drink sessions lined up over the next couple of weekends. So yeah. you know, organize that for your teams and people are starting yeah. to do that and, and create some fun, do something silly even, and you know, just break the monotony so that people can actually you know, get together and still connect, even if it is virtually. Yeah, definitely. Now that there's some awesome tips. Thank you, Craig. Um, I feel, I'm not sure if I want to ask this one now because it's negative after that really great answer, but um, it's still important. So my next question on the list was, what are the signs that business owners or leaders um, should look out for to check if they are burnt out or their team are burnt out? Because I know a lot yeah. of people say, oh, I'm burnt out at the moment. How do you know if you're actually burnt out? Yeah, great question. It's a, it's a common thing and, you know, I've sort of experienced it, not just extreme levels but you know my past life you know, some years ago when I was in corporate you know I certainly was close to burnout a few times um, and I guess I'll preface this by saying in the current times there's the a lot of these symptoms apply to people who are starting to feel burnout but also because of the lockdown it's that the, the um, frustration and of not being able to do things of being locked down and feeling like we're in jail so to speak mm -hmm. um, I mentioned earlier, the first and most important thing to look out for is uncharacteristic behavior. You know, people who are behaving in ways that is not normal, that's usually a good sign that something's not right. Mm -hmm. Whether it's burnout or whether they're just struggling with the situation they're in, that's to be determined. But you know, look for those behavioral things that are not normal for those people. Um, things like Someone may become very distant and withdrawn, or they may show a lack of interest, even in things that they used to love at doing, they may have a lack of interest in now. Mm. Um, they may become inflexible and very rigid and sort of um, argumentative or, or short-tempered or irritated even, um, showing frustration. There's a whole bunch of these sort of negative emotions that come up. Um, one of the, the big ones for uh, being burnt out or really distracted is having disturbed sleep not being able to sleep properly or, you know, sleeping for 10 hours and still waking up tired and you just can't get themselves together. And, you know, that, that's another sign that, you know, things are not quite right. There's something that may, they may need some help with. Um, constantly being distracted. Or on the other side of that, never being able to switch off is a real problem for some people. Um, mm. And that can lead to burnout, you know, where they can't stop. They're working extremely long hours, then even when they're not working, they're constantly thinking about it. And this is off, you know, often a business owner's issue um, that they can't switch the brain off. Mm. And that's something that can generally can lead to burnout if it goes on for extended periods of time. Um, other things, they may start avoiding doing work or their standards drop. Mm -hmm. um, you know, someone who's usually a good worker may suddenly be, start producing substandard work. It's like, hang on, something's not right here. Well, let's mm -hmm. check in. Um, 
mm. not ca- taking care of themselves. They get to that point where they, it's almost like they don't care anymore. It's, they're not even looking after themselves. Mm. And the obvious one for burnout is um, if they're regularly ill or regularly taking time off, that's, you know, that's an item for concern. So all of those things, you know, there's a myriad of them, but mm. all of those types of things are, are signs that, you know, maybe burnout or the sign of the times, they're not coping with the current situation, you know, because, you know, I can, I, my kids are grown up, but for those people who have got sort of young children at home, either infants or primary school age, mm. that's a real struggle. You know, we've got some clients who are executives uh, and they've got young children at home and they're finding it really hard to manage, you know, work, kids, mm. home, dinner, everything else and their own well-being. It can be a real challenge. So, you know, we've just got to be aware, um, be compassionate and understanding and just look for the signs and make sure that you know, people know that they've got support. Mm. Yeah, that that was really great. It's really good to get those examples. And I love that, you know, it's so you make it so clear. Just if if something isn't right, you know, like if if you if if something is a bit off, then you need to dive deep there and and check on that because that that's a sign that hey, something could be going down further. So yeah, very uh, some great content there. Um I wanted to ask you about. Um, could you provide some of the habits or the activities that we could possibly do to look after ourselves during these times? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And that, that's a great follow-up question to the last one. We, yeah. we talked about the problems. <laughs> yes. Now, what can we do about it? So yeah. There's a, there's, there's a number of things we can do, and some of them, it only takes a couple of minutes. Um, one of the things, before I go through and start listing a number of things, one of the good practices to get into is link these things to something you do every day. So for example, um, when you're cleaning your teeth, maybe you go through and just go through a a gratitude session of looking at everything you're grateful for or looking at everything you're happy with or all the things, the positive things you're gonna do that day. So linking some sort of thought process to cleaning your teeth. So while you're cleaning your teeth, you're actually going through that in your mind. It's like how good things are, or this is what we're going to get done today, or this is how I'm going to help people or whatever it might be. Uh, so it's really mm. can be really helpful to link these things to an event that you do through the day. So one of the most basic things, we all breathe, right? But doing some breathing, you know, four to eight slow, deep breaths regularly is a really good thing to just quieten the mind down. Now, what I one of the things I do when I do those breaths, I'll put my hands, my palms of my hand flat on the desk in front of me. And while I'm breathing, I'll just feel the desk surface. So it, it's about using your senses and focusing on your senses. Um, and just doing that for a minute or two is a really simple way to just quieten things down. Mm. Uh, and it's, it works wonderfully. And with a lot of clients, I talk to them, Take four to, four to eight slow, deep breaths between every task and activity you do. Because it takes about, what, two minutes if you take eight slow breaths. Mm. Um, so if you're working on a, a, a document, for example, when you finish that, four to, four to eight slow, deep breaths. Mm. You have a meeting, go back, four to eight slow, deep breaths. That's a really good way to just constantly reset. And it's like, a, I guess, a mini meditation. Mm. Um, and for those that meditate, Obviously, meditation is a great way to just quieten the mind. It's all folk. It's the aim is just quieten the mind down and just take away all the noise because you know there's so much noise going on in our heads at the moment. Uh, we just need to quieten that down. Mm. Um, other things like exercise is obviously a good one. Um, going for a walk, going for a bike ride, swimming. You know, again with the restrictions, we are somewhat limited, but we can do that anywhere within our LGA. So, mm. you know, for us, I go, I ride a mountain bike, so I'm up Mount Kira couple of times a week at least to you know go and work off some frustrations and stress and just enjoy the trails mm. if you're a nature person go for a bushwalk we've got such you know in the yellow warrior here we're so fortunate to have so many you know, beautiful areas around us mm. you've got the beach or the or the escarpment get out and enjoy that in a you know in a safe way obviously but you know get out and do something like that mm. um listening to music can be a great way to just relax and just clear the mind um you know there's the old thing of 
listen to music and dance like nobody's watching. Mm -hmm. Just lose yourself in the music. Do whatever, you know, whatever works for you. Yeah. Reading can be good, you know, reading some, you know, really positive, uplifting type of materials or listen to podcasts from thought leaders and things that can be a really good thing at times like this. Mm. Um, something I did um, last week and Anna and I have been doing, I've got together with a whole group of mountain bikers and started to put together a, a um, initiative to clean up Mount Kira up, up in the bush area. Awesome. Uh, now, obviously, we can't do that during the, the lockdown, but we've got this initiative building and the, when I sort of raised the idea, the amount of people that jumped on board and volunteered to help was amazing. And it's because I think it gave them something positive to focus on and look mm. forward to. So everyone jumped in like, yeah, we'll help out. We'll do it. Now, obviously, well, when the lockdown's over, we'll make that happen. Um, mm. But contributing to something that helps other people is, is a really good thing to do. You know, I went and donated blood last week as well. Um, again, it, it broke the monotony, but it was also it was like I felt good because I was hopefully that blood's going to help someone. It could even save someone's life. Mm. Um, so that's a really good thing. Contribution to other others and you know, things bigger than ourselves is always a good thing. Um, there's one thing that we've talked to a few clients about, and I can't remember who brought this up to us, but it was a great little suggestion. And as I said, we're all going to experience the negative emotions. Um, so we acknowledge that. But one of the things that, you, that people can do is a pity party. So mm -hmm. 10 or 15 minutes at a time, once a day maybe, or once every couple of days, just let it all out. Let all the frustrations out. You can do it with your partner or a friend or just on your own. And just let all those frustrations and anger and whatever it is out, but limit it to 10 or 15 minutes. Mm. And, you know, it's like journaling. Some people like to journal. That's another good thing. Was it's, it's, that's about just getting it out of your head and out into the world and then letting it go. Yeah, I've, there's, there's some amazing tips in there. Thank you, Craig. Um, I think there'll be a tip, a tip in there that will, um, yeah, that will basically meet some, everybody because there's just so many good ones there. So thank you. I can't wait to watch that back. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the key for it is like there's a whole bunch of things, but it, it's mm. finding what works for you. you mm. know, everyone's got their own interests you know, maybe you've got a hobby or go and work on the hobby you know, it was funny because there were people were sort of wondering why bunnings and hardware stores have been left to stay open well to me it was pretty obvious it's like people are locked at home they need things to do it's like well there's all those home projects they go to the hardware store and get the things they need so they can actually do the work at home and which gives them something to work on and you know gets their mind off the, the challenges that we're facing so yeah, anything like that is is good it, it's just Things that bring you joy, that make you happy, mm. um, that you enjoy doing, doing. It, it's that's it. And it's whatever it is, whatever works for you as an individual or you, you and your family, that's great. Get in and do it. Definitely. No, I, I love that. And the breathing one between tasks is something that I'm certainly going to incorporate because just even you talking about it, I felt calmer. So that was that was really great. Thank you, Craig. Um, that's actually the end of all the questions that I have for you. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to cover today? Well, I think, um, no, I think we've covered up, you know, it's again, making sure you look after yourself first so that you can then be at your best to look after other people and making sure that when you think about or select some things that you want to do to help yourself, make sure you actually do them. That's the key point. It's like, as I said, so many people say like, yeah, I know, I know I should, but I just haven't got time. Make time. Schedule it in and make time to look after yourself because mm -hmm. looking after our physical, our mental, our emotional health is just so important in times like this. And, and it's not going to go away. We've always got time. You know, the only, it's so important to just make the time to do it every day, do something every day. And it doesn't have to be two hours. Sometimes, as I said, breathing, you can do that every day and it only takes a couple of minutes, a minute or two each time. Mm. Um, the thing is, it's important for business leaders and, in fact, for everyone to make sure you're looking after yourself first um, yeah. and looking after each other and just you know, being compassionate, being empathetic and making sure that everyone knows we're all going through this. We're all going to face the same challenges mm. at different times. And if you're feeling down, don't you know, withdraw and bottle it up because that can be one of the challenges that you know when we're feeling a bit it's it's getting to us often we we can start to withdraw so make sure that you reach out you know contact people friends you know 
leaders, people at work, whatever, whoever it might be, and just, you know, let's help each other mm. because, you know, we will get through this. We'll get through it together. Mm. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's up to us to look after each other as well as ourselves. Yeah, definitely. No, that, that's fantastic, Craig. Um, and Craig, for people who either wanted to talk to you about resilience um, for themselves or some things they can do for their team um, or just anything in the business um, business space, um, how can people find out more about the work that you and Anna do? So um, our website is www.leadershipcreativity.com um, or you know, anyone can feel free to email us at info at leadershipcreativity.com. Um, and we'll get back to them pretty quickly. You know, we usually within 24 hours will respond in some way and you know, we'll check in. We're always happy to have an obligation free call to talk about things because you know, we're very careful to make sure that we only work with on in areas with businesses that we can actually help. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we yeah, will always, even if we just have a 20 minute conversation, they'll walk away with something, even if we don't end up you know, helping them out in, in a longer term. But um, yeah, yeah we're always happy to help in, in any way we can. That's great. Um, and Craig, another thing as well, um, there's also a really great Facebook page um, that yourself and Anna run as well. Did you want to share that with the members again? Thank you for reminding me about that. Um, yeah, there's a, a, a free Facebook group. It's, it's a group we set up at the beginning of the pandemic. It's called the Energized Business Leader. Um, the aim of the group is to support people through the challenging times of the pandemic. Um, you know, particularly for business leaders and owners who are you know, struggling with a bit of you know, with frustration and overwhelm and, and stress. Um, a key thing is there's no selling in it. We don't even sell in it. There, there is an absolutely no selling from anyone. It is just a support group. It's mm -hmm. free to everyone. Um, if you're interested, jump on Facebook. It's called the Energized Business Leader. Mm -hmm. Just click the button to join. We'll let you in. And then there's some, you know, we're putting videos and posts up. People are sharing things. It's all about just helping each other and supporting each other through the times and, and hopefully um, making it a bit easier for ourselves. Yeah, definitely. No, that's awesome. I think it's such a great resource. So what I'll do is I'll make sure I pop all of those details at the end of our um, video as well so people can see them there. Um, thank you so for that. that's it, Craig. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you also to yourself and Anna for being such a valuable part of the i3 net network it's wonderful to have you as part um, of the the membership so thank you so much craig well it's our pleasure it's a great group to be in it's it's as i think i've said to you a few times it's one of the um more it's one of the best networking groups that you know we've ever been in we've been in a, quite a number but it, you know it's a credit to you and the board that how well i3 net is run and um yeah looking forward to the next time we can actually get into a room together and um Press the flesh and have catch up on things. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much, Craig. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Bianca. Bye bye.